hope. It's one of the three virtues talked about in 1 Corinthians 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Now, obviously, hope is important for any Christian. So then is it wrong to give up hope in your marriage? Does giving up hope mean that you don't trust God? Many committed Christian women are sure it is God's will for their marriage to be restored and saved. They're confident that God is able to change their husbands. And both these things are true. Of course it's God's perfect will for an unhealthy, destructive marriage to be restored to a healthy one. And yes, God is able to change anyone. But God never forces a person to change or repent. It is always their choice. So what if your husband continues to refuse to acknowledge his sin, refuses to truly repent, refuses to take any responsibility to change? Does God call you to stay indefinitely in this destructive or abusive marriage, holding on to hope that your husband miraculously humble himself and admit his destructive ways and change? Proverbs 13, 12 says this, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. That means when you hope and hope and hope, and that hope is continually dashed, it can literally make you sick inside. We call this kind of hope in our group, hopium. It's a false hope that makes you feel better. But if you do see evidence that your hope is being fulfilled, it does grow and become nourishment to you. The key is seeing clearly. The first component of building your own internal core strength is being committed, courageously committed to the truth. No more pretending. Seeing clearly. Jesus tells us if your eye is good, your whole body is full of light. And Jesus was perfectly clear when it came to Judas. He didn't falsely hope Judas would change. In 1 Samuel 25, Abigail lived with the truth that her husband was a foolish and surly man, and she acted accordingly to that reality. She didn't just hope that Nabal would change. There was no evidence that he was interested in changing. And David, after Saul's repeated lies and false promises, didn't hope for Saul to suddenly change his ways. David was crystal clear that Saul wanted to kill him, even when Saul pretended to change. Each of these biblical stories is an example of living in the truth and not wishful thinking or hopium, false hope. So what's the answer? Are you just supposed to give up? No. Letting go of hope is not the same as giving up. Letting go of the hope that your husband will change or that your marriage is going to be restored is turning to God and putting your future and outcome into God's loving hands. It's releasing your need for the outcome to be what you want it to be and instead surrendering it to God. Just like Jesus did in the garden when he prayed, not my will, but yours be done. Surely God's perfect will would have been that Adam and Eve never sinned, that Jesus would never have had to die. But he left that choice up to Adam and Eve. Mark chapter 10 tells us how Jesus let go of the rich young ruler, a man who wanted his way more than God's way. Jesus loved him and let him go. In Luke chapter 15, a loving father releases his son. He doesn't beg him to stay. He allows his son to make his choice to live a sinful life. Henry Cloud's book, Necessary Endings, says this, the difference between hoping and wishing is that hope comes from a real objective reason that the future is going to be different than the past. Anything other than that is simply a wish that comes from your desires, hopium. So if you've been living in a destructive marriage for a long time without any real change, what reason do you have to hope that things will be different six months from now, five years from now? If you can't think of any good reason, then you have to ask yourself whether you want to continue living in the same reality. Only you can make that choice. Remember, God calls his people to put their hope in him, not necessarily in what we think he should do or what we wish he would do. Until next time, God bless.